Look what just showed up for a couple days this week. The 2024 Nissan Z Nismo. Time to see what the slightly more track focused version of the Nissan Z is like. I am quite excited to spend a couple days living with the Nissan Z Nismo. You can immediately tell it has a much more aggressive front fascia. We'll go over all the technical details. Look at those wheels. Much stickier tires too. Around back, we also have a much more aggressive rear fascia. We gotta load up the trunk with a bunch of stuff and head off to the office. The trunk release is inside the Nissan badge there. Just as practical as the regular Nissan Z. Practicality is pretty good. Backpack, camera bag, tripod slider, Got dinner with me too, but the important part is, what is this thing like to drive? Oh. Ooh. So we'll get the first slightly disappointing piece of news out of the way. Yes, the Nismo Z is only available with the automatic transmission. Still slightly holding out hope they may add the manual later on because it's available for the regular Z, right? And I know enthusiasts would appreciate that. A couple first impressions from my drive here to work this morning. So the Recaro seats in this car are definitely pretty aggressive. They're tight actually, especially around the hips. They're manual adjustable. And if you're a bit more on the girthy side like I am, they're, they would get uncomfortable on the street after a while. We'll see how I deal after a couple hours of driving this car. On track, I assume they would be fantastic because they do hold you in. They are manual adjustable and I'm noticing, I feel like I have less headroom. I don't know if I would clear with a helmet on in this car. My head is pretty close to the roof. And then overall, the whole car is firmer, tighter. It's stiffer, the dampers are definitely stiffer, and this is the automatic, right? So it's just decently quick. Now I haven't spent a ton of time with the automatic Z. I just drove it briefly out in Vegas when this car first debuted, the regular Z. Spent most of my time in the manual, but it's got pretty quick shifts. One quick thing, I did change the display to sport mode, which looks way cooler. You have that Nismo badge there, tachometer switches to the middle, a lot of red accents there. See the little G-force meter on the left, pretty cool. All right, Wynn, welcome to the 2024 Nissan Z Nismo. Look at the startup screen. Ooh, we need to clarify that Wynn is not my girlfriend or wife. We are simply colleagues. People did not correct. understand that in the last time you showed up in a video. That is correct. I am a wife. You are a but wife. I am not his wife. Not fortunately. That would be terrible. But. Thank God. <laughs> first impressions on the Nissan Z in this movie? Um, it's not kid friendly. No, look at all the space back there. Where are you going to put a kid? All the space back there. There's even a bar to like. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Not kidding. <laughs> this is a 2024, right? Yeah. I do think certain like aesthetics on the inside are kind of dated. Okay. Um, you're very insightful because you're correct. Yeah. So it's giving me like late 2000s vibe. I like getting the perspective from somebody who is not like a hardcore car person because this car is absolutely for a very hardcore car person. And that was really insightful because this platform is definitely dated. It is actually from like a mid early 2000s platform and they've updated it. So it is a new model year with stuff, but it's not brand new. We'll cover that more in detail. But with that, we're going to go get some pho. So. Yay! Yay, pho. We come to get pho and neither of you guys actually get pho. It's spicy. Day. Yeah, I guess that's that's true. Oh, I didn't think about that. I'm still gonna enjoy this spicy broth. That's not fat either. It's. It is not. All right, you're actually from a Vietnamese person. Is that? fine. It's it's noodles and broth. Just finished up filming some b-roll for the review part of this video as the sun is setting and i also just had a thought 
I think I've been saying Nismo, or maybe Nismo, but it's technically Nissan Motorsports, so it's Nismo, right? But I think some people say Nismo, and now I'm not sure if I say Nismo or Nismo, because I think it should be Nismo, and now I'm overthinking all of it. But regardless, it stands for Nissan Motorsports, so it should be Nismo. Nissan Z Nismo. Now I've said the word too many times, and it doesn't sound like a real word anymore. This thing is cool. Taking exterior shots, I'm seeing a lot of different details, the changes they did for the Z Nismo. So let's do a quick exterior walk around before it gets too dark. We've got the car staged here with the front and rear running lights on. The headlights are the same as the regular Z with those two top and bottom crescent moon shaped elements that are inspired by an old Datsun Z with how the headlight would reflect in the enclosure. So that's where that design inspiration came from. We have the updated Nissan logo here. We have the Nismo badge with the red O, and the front fascia is revised, right? It's much less rectangular, much less squared off around the edges. It's still fairly large and gaping, but I think it looks better, especially with these like body color pieces that come in here with the red lower fascia. Sort of a splitter element there. We've got a little side plane there too for functional aerodynamics to help with the downforce and the overall aero balance. And because they had to fit wider wheels, wider track, you see this little piece here on the fender to widen out to allow for those wider tires and wheels. I like the design of these wheels. They're actually pretty concave for a factory setup, especially look at the rears. They're pretty nice. I believe they're 19 inch wheels running Dunlop tires. That red accent line is along the side skirts. Same flush door handles here too. Little Nissan Z badge here on that rear quarter panel. Oh, also, the mirror has a red accent line on the blacked out mirror. We have the blacked out roof and a really nice mineral white paint. It's getting dark now, so you can't see it as much. A three-piece spoiler, a little duck duckbill spoiler here. And then the Z badge. I love the taillight elements on the new Nissan Z. They have a really cool 3D depth effect to them. And then we have the updated lower fascia, more aggressive. Is that a braking? Uh, actually, I'm not sure. that might just be a design element. We have the exhaust tips there. That's kind of like baffled around the edges. And there we go. Quick look at the exterior of the Nissan Z. I always loved the rear three quarters. I like the back of the regular Z. It's more aggressive as befits the Nismo version. These tires and wheels are definitely much more aggressive with the little fender piece right there but i think they really made the front end look even better i never minded the front end it wasn't the prettiest and i know it was controversial but i think they really fixed a lot of people's complaints that it was just too squared off despite having historical heritage to that design i think this looks overall much better and i like the red accents with that we're gonna go back to the office get a workout in and pick this back up later This nine speed actually has been turned off. It is shifting very quickly. The responses from the paddle shifters are quite impressive too. Wow. All right, I'm pretty impressed with that actually. For a torque converter auto, that's pretty good. The practicality of the Z is definitely great. You have this big hatchback here. Got this cool print of my Z06. Can just set this back here. A lot of space. Go ahead and close that. One downside is you can see through the rear window. I don't see a privacy like cover or shade. So make sure you don't leave anything super valuable in there. If you're not parked in a super safe area. In the parking lot lighting, you can see a bit of that metallic flake. There is a lot of depth to this paint. And with that, it is late. We gotta head home. Check to make sure the Lucid is charging. That's my other car this week. But we're gonna take the Z home tonight because I'm still enjoying this car. Pretty quick. It seems to put traction power down much better than the non-Nismo automatic. I remember that one being really tail happy. Definitely helped by the 10 millimeter wider rear tires and the fact that they are much stickier Dunlop Sport Max tires. 
Just like in the regular Z, we have these three little pods here showing boost, turbo speed, and your battery voltage. And then there's that infotainment screen. Again, I just run CarPlay the entire time. Wireless CarPlay, uh, I plugged it in and realized it had wireless CarPlay. We have two USB ports, C and regular, and then actual climate toggles. It gives you a little kick when you're in Sport Plus mode when it upshifts too. It adds to the sporty feel. For a torque converter auto, I'm actually pretty impressed. They improved it a lot. Is it as good as a dual clutch? Absolutely not. Uh, I would still love a manual in this platform. So those who are leaving very upset comments on the internet, it's okay. This car definitely feels dated in some ways, but then also has a bit more of the analog experience. I remember when people would accuse the GTR of being too much like a computer, it's too digital, which I never really got because the GTR always felt really engaging to me, especially as it continued to age against modern stuff, those really became digital. Like you drive like a McLaren 12C or 570S or one of these newer hybrid supercars, those are just computers in the way that they deliver the power, they're so precise, they don't have as much of the analog engagement. A GTR these days is positively raw. You can feel the roughness of the transmission, the shifts, the powertrain has an analog feel and this Z Nismo also brings out a bit of it the firm suspension in fact it doesn't change the damping settings it's just very firm and bouncy over a lot of different surfaces pros and cons to that the way the whole car comes together yes it feels old in some ways but at the same time has that analog engagement feel wrapping up a night here at the office back in the Z I don't have much more time left with the car because this is a very short loan as this vehicle just came out and there's probably like 12 in the entire country so just a couple days to see what the z is like I'll throw my gym bag back here we have the nismo floor mats z there in the middle see those red accents on the recaro seats little recaro logo the nismo logo i couldn't find like you know sometimes bucket seats have a little handle for you to like quickly flip the seat forward. I couldn't find one on this, so I had to manually like rotate it forward just to put something in the parcel shelf behind the seat. Go ahead and hop in. These anodized red buttons are so cool. Little gauges there light up too. And then there's no wireless charging pad. I believe this is just somewhere for you to put your phone. It does have a lip, so it won't fly away. It'll fit an iPhone easily. Go ahead and put that in there, but it's not a wireless charging pad. The start, stop button, does that light up? I think that has a little bit, yep. Same thing with the drive mode. And then here's your gear selector. You press a little button here on the left. Back is drive. Down again, puts it into manual. All the way up for reverse. And you press the button for park. Backup camera, right, put it back in reverse. The backup camera is not very good. It's not good resolution and at night it's even worse. So it shows some of the age and the interior has a lot of parts like the door handles and some of the controls. It definitely shows the age of this platform, but steering wheel updated, digital cluster updated, infotainment screen updated. Those are some of the important parts. But I think like like these things, these, oh, these are just blank buttons. That's the trunk release. Those probably are carryover from previous generation Z. I'm fairly certain these are too. They look really familiar from the 370. And these definitely are the same. If I had to pick my three favorite parts of the Z Nismo and my three least favorite parts, let's see if I can come up with all six of those right now on the spot. One of my favorites is gonna be the styling revision. It definitely looks much more aggressive and it's cool that it's also functional. I like the VR30, the twin turbo V6. In stock form, it's pretty potent. It's a nice combo. It's, I guess, the baby brother to the GTR VR38, right? And I do know the aftermarket potential of the VR30 is definitely potent. If you look at tuned like Infinity Q50s, Q60s, they really get up there with bolt-ons and some modifications and a tune. And it will be the third thing. I like that it's firmer, it's stiffer, it's more aggressive everything from the steering to suspension it comes together to be a better cohesive sports car that definitely is track capable um, does it feel like a track race car no I don't think I would say that it's definitely firm I wish it had adapted dampers but I think that part of it improves it but that leads to one of the things I, I dislike why didn't the Z just come like this like the regular Z if it was like this I would have been much much more impressed and excited with this platform because it had the ingredients it just took those little extra tweaks whether it was development time or maybe a bit more development resources to get to this point that would have been nice second thing i dislike is the price it's 
It just seems too expensive to me. Almost $70,000. I know everything is getting more expensive, but I had a bit of sticker shock when I saw that. And the last thing, what's the last thing that I, uh, the things that are dated in age, like some of the touch points, like the door handles and things like that, that feels cheaper and older because it looks like older stuff you you heard a co-worker right when she got in the car she goes this car feels like it's old i'm like yeah in some ways it is and when you couple that with the really high price point you're like ooh. in their defense like i think the ford mustang dark horse still has some carryover parts from older ones and for example my shelby gt 350r definitely had parts that i recognize from my like boss 302 right like the the dome light in the middle on the 350r was the same as a boss 302 which is like an old 2010 mustang generation thing so sometimes those things will carry over but quick summary of some of my thoughts uh, with that we're gonna head home for the night how am i doing on fuel half a tank showing 170 miles that is fine we'll drive home i think i have one more full day tomorrow with the z and i will definitely still drive it the lucid is sitting there waiting for me i'll use that this weekend also if i look a little sweaty and disheveled it's because i just worked out at the office gym before heading home i'm trying to get back into shape so i can fit better in these recaro bucket seats so there's this stretch of road that is usually pretty bouncing in most cars but yesterday night i realized how bouncy it is in this car like it's just these like sequence of bumps and it must hit like the resonant frequency of the suspension uh they've tried to fix some of it but like in this car it's like actively yeah that's 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 not comfortable uh yeah it's like really bad in this car um we'll chalk that up to race car things i guess i do want to complain about the key fob because well it sucks it's really old basic just lock unlock the alarm button nissan logo there's no z logo there's no nismo logo on it and it's just cheap feeling old very disappointing. The key fob sucks on a Nissan Z Nismo. Like this is not a $70,000 key fob. Not that you're buying this car only for the key fob, but it's part of the whole ownership experience, obviously. Just went and fueled up the car because it is getting picked up tomorrow. Just a few short days with the Nismo Z. Usually it's a full week, but probably because it's so new and in demand that there's not many of them in the media fleets. It's a shortened loan here, but it's still a lot of fun. I also just took a coworker for a ride. He asked me and because he loves the 350Z, the 370Z, and I wanted to let him experience the car. It was quite a lot of fun. I want to finish up the video with a quick little Q&A section. I posted on Instagram when I first got the car, like, what do you guys want to know? Questions. So let's go through and answer a few of them. We'll try to do like a, a speed Q&A round because a lot of them have been addressed in the rest of this whole video. Is it dollar for dollar a better or worse option compared to a Supra GR? I did talk about this a bit and I will stand with it. If you're gonna be tracking the car, autocross, maybe you have awesome canyon roads, I think I would take this because the Supra doesn't have like a, a focused track version, right? Just the regular GR Supra, but I would take this over the Supra and then the Supra over a regular Nissan Z. If you want a manual, your decision is kind of forced into either the regular Z or a Supra there. Uh, space, how the engine feels, I talked about that. Interior picks, yep. How do you feel about its overall driving dynamics compared with the regular Z? I think it is vastly improved. The regular Z was too soft. It was like driving a little marshmallow around. That's a little bit of an exaggeration, but this firms it up. I think it's much, much more exciting. My heart rate's actually a little bit elevated because it had some fun in a spirit a little drive and it actually in sport plus mode will let you slide the rear end out just a little bit which is actually quite a lot of fun is it worth the sixty six thousand dollars this one here is sixty eight thousand dollars oh, it's, it's expensive it's a it's a significant margin over the regular z the thing is you can't exactly replicate replicate this in the aftermarket and you probably couldn't do it for cheaper than the price difference but it's it's a lot of money i would say probably it feels five to 10 grand too expensive. This was like 60K like optioned up or like starting at 55 and you get it at 60K. I know that's where the regular Z is. Then I would forgive things like the interior materials, parts of it that feel a bit dated. It is a lot of fun. I like the way it looks, but that price point, I'm struggling with it a bit, especially when you can get something like a Mustang Dark Horse brand new for similar price price point. That's got an AV8 making 500 horsepower or Camaro SS1 LE and things like that. Uh, what part should the Z have pulled from the 10 plus year old GTR? Could they have thrown the engine or brakes in to make it better? 
and a manual and it's perfect. Well, it's a lot in this one. The GTR is an old platform. They did pull the independent ignition spark timing strategy. I don't know, the engine would not have made sense. Would that be badass? Absolutely, but I don't think the engine would make sense to put in this car. Uh, the cost would be probably crazy high. Upgraded brakes, I'm fine with the brakes on this one. I don't think carbon ceramic brakes would make this better, especially at this price point. Uh, at a manual, yes, I would, I would definitely enjoy it with a manual transmission. How does the transmission feel? Does it feel like a slush box or is it actually good? It's actually good. For a torque converter auto, I think it's done very nicely. Crisp upshifts and downshifts, especially in Sport Plus mode with the paddle shifters. When you leave it in auto, let it do, let it do, it, let it do its own thing. Uh, pretty nice tuning for the transmission. Still kind of wish we had the option for at least a manual transmission. Uh, asking about the price separation, ADM and things like that. Oh man, if you have to pay markup on one of these, I, if, if this ends up being 80 to 90 grand, then I would not do that. But I said the same thing, for example, Shelby GT350R. When it was new, 70 grand, uh, dealers were asking 15 to 20K over, and I was like, no, I think it's a fantastic car at 70 grand, the Shelby, but not at $90,000. Same thing for this. I would be a buyer at like 60K on the dot. I know that's not what it is, MSRP brand new, but it'll depreciate, in which case it'll be a fun option. Power increase, yep, it's plus 20 horsepower, plus 34 pound-feet of torque. Yeah, there we go. Quick little Q&A section. I want to try to incorporate more of this in these future videos. Uh, so yeah, make sure you follow on Instagram or Facebook, and I will do these when I get these new cars. And with that, we'll conclude our couple days living with the Nismo version of the Nissan Z. To sum it up, I wish this is how the Z came from the factory as a baseline, but as a Nismo version here, definitely a lot of fun if you're gonna track it, autocross, have amazing canyon roads, I think you would have quite a bit of fun with this. And I think I've addressed everything I wanna address with this car, first impressions, just a couple days. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.